In today's Gospel reading, our Lord is asked a question regarding the Kingdom of God, when it is coming, and in his answer, he actually gives two answers, that the Kingdom of God is already present in your midst, or it's among you, but he also refers to his final coming, his second coming, at the end of time, when he will establish the fullness of his Kingdom. And his answer is very noteworthy because many of the Pharisees, many of the Jewish people, including some of his own fo followers, were expecting a worldly kingdom, a kind of political kingdom. They were expecting the Messiah who would make the Jewish nation the most dominant of all nations and, and make all the other nations kind of bow down to them and, and serve them. So this is what they were expecting and hoping for, and, and of course they had it all wrong. So when our Lord response, he says, you know, the kingdom is, is not the kind that you can observe. It doesn't consist of these visible realities, of these visible things. And it's important that we realize this. So, you know, sometimes if Catholics are asked, well, you know, what's the kingdom of God? They might refer to the hierarchy of the church, the pope, the bishops, the priests, and the physical structures, the Vatican, and all these things. And that's not the kingdom either. So the kingdom of God is amongst us. In the case of our Lord, when he spoke these words, well, we could say that he is the king of, the, of his kingdom, the kingdom of God, but he is also the kingdom itself. And so the kingdom of God was in their midst at that time, but the kingdom of God is also within each one of us who are believers, who are in a state of grace. So the kingdom dwells within us. And uh, just yesterday, in the uh, first reading for the uh, Feast of St. John Lateran, I think it was Paul's letter to the Corinthians, but how it mentioned that we are temples of the Spirit of God. So God dwells within us. So the kingdom of God is within us because we are in a state of grace, so God dwells within us. Now, how do we describe this kingdom of God? Well, yes, we could say it's God within us, but it's really a kingdom of peace, a kingdom of love, a kingdom of joy. And in fact, we could list off all the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit, and that's what the kingdom of God is like. So gentleness, kindness, generosity, modesty, self-control, chastity, all these things, the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. But, you know, focusing just on, on three of them, you know, kingdom of love, kingdom of peace, and kingdom of joy. So in other words, if we truly possess the kingdom of God within us, we will manifest these fruits in our lives. We will experience joy. We will experience peace. We will manifest love, love of God and love of neighbor. Now, I, I think it's fair to say that many people will say, well, I seem to fall short. And yes, and the reason is because God doesn't dwell within us to the extent that he could because maybe we're still too attached to certain sinful things or worldly things or because we don't have as great or as close a relationship with God as we should. So what is the source of this peace, this joy, this love? Well, ultimately it's God, yes, but you see, when we possess the kingdom of God, we understand that we are loved by God, even though we are so undeserving. And if we truly understand and appreciate that, it's, it's kind of, it's overwhelming. It's kind of like, oh my gosh, I'm so fortunate, so favored to be loved by God. And we cannot help but respond with love. And by responding with love, we just grow in love and we manifest that love to others. And of course, we are at peace because we have nothing to fear. We're not worried about temptation to sin because we've conquered our inclinations to sin. We don't have to worry. And even for our past sins or, or little sins that we may still commit, well, we know that God loves us. We know that he's willing to forgive us. We're not anxious about it. We're not worried about it. We just trust in God. So we are at peace. And we have peace towards everyone, even our enemies. In other words, we don't hold a grudge. We don't get angry because we possess the kingdom of God. And so it's easy to be at peace. So we have this love. We have this peace. And the joy that comes from this. So in other words, we don't have to struggle against, you know, temptation. We don't have to struggle against anything. And we know that no matter what happens, whether we get sick, whether we are persecuted or tortured or even martyred, it doesn't matter 
because we trust in God. We trust that we will make it to heaven, that we will be with our beloved, which is something we long for and hope for. So if, if we understand our faith and if we are close to God and overcome our sinfulness, we will be filled with peace, joy, and love. And this is the manifestation of the presence of the kingdom of God within us. So this is what we seek and this is what we have access to, and it depends upon us whether we possess these things or not. To what extent do you want to have a close relationship with God? How much are you working towards that relationship? How attached are you to the things of this world? Are you pursuing those things in place of the things of God? Well, obviously, you're going to have worries. You're going to have anxieties. You're not going to have peace. You're going to have all kinds of conflicts. So we all want these things, and God offers them to us, and God is the only one who can grant them to us, and it is there for us to, to grasp. You recall that passage where our Lord says, you know, and, and John the Baptist also, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's within your reach. It's at hand. It's for you to grasp. It's being offered to you. And whether you possess it, and to what degree you possess it, depends upon you. Just a reminder, tomorrow is November the 11th, Remembrance Day, and the Knights of Columbus, after the morning mass, I think at uh, 1045, they will be doing a uh, marching procession and, and various prayers and, and remembrances to honor our deceased loved ones who, who died in wars and things like that. So if you need to go in and out of the parking lot, make sure you do so before that uh, marching procession takes place.